Welcome to the Media Bubble Podcast, the podcast that talks about movies, anime, comics, video games, and whatever we feel like. I'm your host, Frederick, and with me as always is my co-host, Carol. Hello. And in today's episode, we are going to kin- continue with the top 10 media franchises, but this time with Carol's list. Yeah, so last time, when you have shown me some of the things that you enjoy... I felt like I really needed to step up my, my game and at least try to make as good as a present- presentation as you did. Oh, so uh, you have stepped up your uh, game in editing or I, uh, presentation? In PowerPoint, or yes. This is not nothing major. Yeah, but, <laughs> oh, all, all, the, all the things you, have, you see on your YouTube screen are PowerPoint presentations we have made but but for our listeners if you haven't checked out our youtube videos you can you can check it out on your on our youtube channel Uh, yeah nevertheless i have 10 things or well i mean you we you mentioned franchises and it was kind of difficult for me to like determine things that are franchise that i enjoy but i think i managed yeah i i feel like that was hard too when i was starting to think of it but uh here we go. I have ten cards. Each one represents a. Uh, oh, look life. at that! And uh, all all the ten came down, and you have made them bubbles too. Yeah, <laughs> it's, we are the bubble podcast. We can't go without bubbles. Yeah. Um, so um, any any bets? Any anything well, that you think about? Ma- maybe just something that uh, we we can uh, just say is that. Uh, I made in, like nine predictions of what I thought you would put on this, and you said that one was correct and one you you saw and you put that on the list. Exactly. So prior to recording this, I gave you a chance to guess. So yeah, I changed it, and you should if you say the same things, you will have two rights. Hmm. Okay. Well, should we get started then? You're not gonna, you're not gonna guess. Uh, am I going to guess now? Yeah, guess. We'll see how 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 well you do. I was just thinking that I could put up my screen of those nine choices and uh, put that on the screen. Okay, okay. Um, so in that case, I'll start. So ten franchises. Well, these are things or media or comic books or podcasts that I hold dear. If it's lower in the list, I still think they love it, but it's maybe not the not the current obsession of mine. So yeah, and and they, these are also our ten top of all time. So it, if number ten, I feel think is really good. Well, it's Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I, I was pre- precisely going going to say that uh, when you asked me before of the things that uh, I I was thinking would be on here I, I, I was 95% sure that it was going to be Harry Potter yeah I mean I think we already talked about uh, the series on, on, on our channel on our podcast mm. but it's still it, I still hold the series dear you can see that I've included the books not the movies um, specifically the cover for uh, Harry Potter and uh, the Sorcerer's Stone what do you feel about the movies the movies are really good. Like I enjoy watching them, and I would like to see, would like to see them again. But I mm. hold a special place in my heart for the books because I, when I was little, I inherited a lot of the series from my brother. So my mom read the books to my brother, then I received them, and, I, and I, then I read them like multiple times, back to back. And I remember going to. Uh, Wait, were you one of those kids that got the books day one? No, never. I always got them from second hand from uh, from like antiquarians. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, and the thing is, like, I always wish that the Harry Potter world would be real, but now I'm when I'm an adult, I I guess like they still have just like normal lives. Okay, you're a wizard, but you're still going to work. You're not. You're like either just you. Sure, magical realism, but not not a lot of changes. <laughs> mm. What what uh, what I would wish from the Harry Potter world is, I, I really like the f- the f- first seven books, and that's pretty much all I all I like. I would wish wish for them to 
do something else that is, that is in this magical world that is good. I mean, they kind of tried with uh, Magical Beasts and Where to Find Them. Yeah, I feel like that failed. First movie was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, the first movie actually was decent, but... And I and I have yeah. The Cursed Child, the play, in book form. I actually received it from a friend. Um, but I have yet to read it. I know what it's about. It's like kind of fan I, I read it. <laughs> you read it? I read it and it... I read it and it... I... I yeah, fan fiction is an understatement, if you ask me. <laughs> Voldemort's daughter and Bellatrix, like, strange. Yeah, what the heck did that, that come from? I have no idea. Like, I guess, like, she's his most loyal supporter, and if he has an heir, if he were to die, it, he, he should it was continue ca- his legacy. It ca- it felt like, uh, oh, we need a villain. Well, what are we going to come up with? <laughs> we have Harry Potter's kid here. Well, let's make his mortal enemy also have a kid. I mean, that's kind of how it works with like sequels, like sequel, fan fiction-y, things like that. Mm. Okay, but uh, I mean, but uh, okay. keep in mind... Maybe you can express your love for the franchise. It's, 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 I, I love it. It's a dear part of my childhood. But at the moment, I don't feel... Like it, I'm saying it times and times again. Current J.K. Rowling, with her pretty awful opinions about trans people, has really made me dislike her work. And I know that some some people think that you should be able to enjoy series without thinking about its creator. And I see the point, like Death of the Order. I get it. But I feel like I can't really see the books without her, so to say. Mm. If you if you're just going to go in childhood memories, how was it for you to read these books as a child? I I was a really I was really into books actually. When I was a child, I mm. I when I was sad or troubled, I always went to books. Uh, it was like my happy place. Uh, so I and Harry Potter was a big uh, book series for you then. Hell yeah, like that and Narnia. But anyway, yeah. enough about Harry Potter. Well, uh, may- maybe we can just point out that we, we don't really like what J.K. Rowling is saying, even if we like the first Harry Potter books. Yeah, and and, and some of the media, like, uh, uh, for example, the Harry Potter website is pretty cool. Like, you can read tidbits of character information, you can, like, get into sort of into a house. Uh, like, Diagon Alley is in the Universal Studios, I think it is, like... I want. I. I. It looks just. Have so you good. have you done that? T- have you done that wizard test, which uh, puts you in a house? Yeah, it, I got Gryffindor. What What did you become? Gryffindor. Oh. Yeah, like hell yeah, brave and 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 and, and brave and, and strong and brave. <laughs> That's me. And brave. <laughs> brave for sure. And don't forget brave. <laughs> what did you sort get sorted into? Hmm. Uh, no, I haven't done it. I think you would either be either a Gryffindor or a Slytherin. Why? I don't know. Just like I feel like you can be brave as well, and I didn't want to say Hufflepuff. Mm. Like maybe, like my brother actually did a t- did a test and he became a, a Hufflepuff. Like and uh, as kind of a thing, he uh, uh, wants to. Uh, um, he bought some Hufflepuff clothes and wore them as a Halloween costume one time. That is not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> like, but like, I think like this year I missed a chance to become like Among Us. Like, they sold costumes mm. on the internet and uh, they sold out in like a few seconds. Okay. But moving on from uh, my my n- on number nine on the list is Homestuck. <laughs> What what is Homestuck? <laughs> Let me tell you about Homestuck. <laughs> so Homestuck is a story about four kids that that by playing a like a sim like Sims slash sandbox game have caused the end of the world, and now must traverse a world designed for them to create a new universe. But of course, it isn't so easy because they are being pestered by trolls, aliens from another planet that lead to wacky shenanigans and uh, falling down the stairs and uh, 
Well, these trolls, they kind of murder each other and they have somehow lost their chance of creating a new world, the ultimate world. So they try to guide the humans. But then there's also this big monster who is uh, Lord English. He's another player from another session who, that, who, that, who, that, who tries to destroy the universe because he was the only one player and he killed his sister and is like, it's pretty long. <laughs> well, what medium is this? So... I think it's a webcomic. Oh. It's it's it has like eleven thousand pages, and I read all of it. And currently, as it stands, the original comic is finished. Then there was hmm? epilogues, which were semi-canon, which diverged the story into like two endings. Then there was Homestuck Two, with uh, with a new team that took the reins with Hussy, like like giving them an uh, outline for the story. But they were harassed so much that they stopped posting live updates. So when Homestuck 2 will be finished, we'll get the story end. Well, I have never heard of Homestuck, to be honest. It was a pretty big thing. Like, when you still went to school, I started reading Homestuck during the Omega Pause. So... Uh, when? When? It was like... Uh, in t- uh, third year at Hochschule. Second, third. Really? Hmm. And it was pretty fun because, like, it was live. There were forums you could like check with other check with other members. There were fan comics, fan creations. I... Did you talk? Did you talk about this series with me? It's a series that's really hard to get to get into. It's like it's as I said, it's eleven thousand pages long. I can introduce you to well, Homestuck. I... I can just make a whole episode about Homestuck, and it wouldn't be enough. I feel like with all these 10 media franchises, even in my list, we could probably have a whole episode on each specific. I think that's a wonderful idea, actually. But 20 more episodes than planned. But Homestuck, it's a really like mix of like silly humor, character arcs. Uh, you know Toby Fox? The yeah. guy who created Undertale. So he did, so he did music for Homestuck uh, with Hussey mm. and... Uh, a lot of like the music is created by fans. There are like a lot of animations. There are games. There, are, there is like exp- like it's really cool to experience. And it went at the high at the end when the end game like chapters were posted. It was really hype. And then the forums mm. were nuked. And then okay. And then people had to create their own. Like it was mismanaged. And then I put it so low on my list because it's I still like it a lot. And I periodically think about Homestuck but a lot of things derailed after the ending like after the release of, of Homestuck 2 well, what did it, was the ending not that good? the problem was like original Homestuck it's about kids and a lot of like immature humor and Homestuck 2 tried to follow on that formula but since everyone like expected like world shattering information like continuation of the story when the new creators took new direction of the series they just started bashing them endlessly hmm. and it turns out like a lot of people left the project and it was not really fun and then there's like a whole situation with Sarah Z that was threatened by what pumpkin the company of Homestuck because she made an analysis video about the series and then Hussey not seeing the video she made accused her of like slander and then proceeded to not see the video for the next five months when he was talking with her. Okay. It, it's just, it's just that's as, as I said, the series is convoluted and the, my reasons for not placing it higher are also convoluted. Also, it's over for like a few, few years now. Yeah, that kind of puts uh, your fandom stuck in a little way. Yeah, kind of home stuck. <laughs> yeah. So, to the next one, I guess, then. Yes. So, the next one on the list. Do you think you can guess it? Uh, how would I guess? Uh, well, I mean, uh, it's easy. It's Buffy. Yeah, I had a feeling that this one will co- would come up. This was also <laughs> one of the ones I predicted. Yeah, so this was actually the one that you made me realize that I had to include. Oh, was this the one? So Harry Potter was the one that you already had on the list and Buffy... Buffy Man. is yeah because Harry Potter was a big child, big part of my childhood, but Buffy is like really good. 
When did you start to watch Buffy? About a year ago, but I watch her watch it so sparsely because I, I mean, sometimes at work I have moments where I can watch TV shows and hmm. it's not bad. It's not really not bad. So it's kind of a n- newly discovered uh, show for you. Exactly. I'm on season two, I think. Half of, half of season two or three. And it's just so fun what they're doing because it's like, yeah, people are dying or are being disfigured or being turned into vampires, but nobody cares. Just like, pe- day mm. goes on. There was one episode <laughs> yeah. where, where like a pack of kids got in, turned into like cannibalistic hyenas and they ate the principal and like the show goes on just like that <laughs> and uh, no one questioned it in the next episode no 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 they didn't well i mean it is expanded upon why they didn't really notice it but it's just so the story follows buffy and her scooby gang that they call themselves there's like uh, uh the, there's a one mean girl then there's was buffy's friend and there there's uh, uh, Carol, more about the uh, the reason why you love the show more than uh, uh, describing. So Buffy is really campy, and it's it, and it's like the humor in the show is like it's funny because it's it's like it's just like monsters and vampires and like ghosts and invisible people like killing people, but they're like really like. Yeah, like what do you expect me to do about it? Like they're really forward about it. It the jokes uh, what, are really wait, clever. Uh, is it more than vampires she hunts, or is it just vampires? No, no, no. So she is the slayer. So in every generation, there's a slayer. Uh, oh. Is what we are le- like what we learn in the intro. She is the chosen mm. one for each generation to kill like uh, supernatural beings. Yeah. Which makes it fun when she dies. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. It is spoilers, but it's like a 17-year-old show. So she yeah. dies, and then, I mean, in every generation there's a Slayer. If one Slayer dies, then there's a new one. So now there's two mm. Slayers. <laughs> Which is really cool, oh. because like it because Buffy is struggling with her secret life as a Slayer and her regular life. Because she uh, wishes that, that kind she... of Spider-Man thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. But she, but like, she, she, she is being threatened, like, to, to be killed, like, Every week. Mm. The show came out in the 90s, if I remember correctly. Late 90s, maybe. Okay, but not to dwindle on Buffy. Watch it. Listeners, please watch it. I guarantee it's so much fun. It's like Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, but like a, a little like a little bit darker and a little bit more serious, but also a little bit more fun. Okay. Okay, next up, The Sims. The Sims. Yeah. Oh, we have talked about this in one of our previous episodes. Yeah, and make notice that I put Sims 2 Seasons, which is... Oh, uh, is which... that specifically the one you like most then? Yes. So when I was a little kid, I was obsessed with The Sims. I played Castaways, I played Stories, I had almost all, like, um, I had almost full collection of Sims 2. The only yeah. one that I didn't have was Apartment Life. Um. Mm. And Sims 2 Seasons was my favorite expansion uh, because it introduced weather, it introduced plant sims. My favorite uh, like town was also introduced and like I had the most fun with Seasons. Okay, how, how many hours do you think you have spent on the Sims game? Oh my god, I can't even begin to count. With Sims 2, like at least like 200 or more. Like, my mom knew that it was, this was the thing that I really liked, so she bought me expansions on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> like, she had her, like, whole birthday deal figured out. Just give me one expansion pack of The Sims 2 and I will be a happy child. <laughs> and, you, and she could do that for about ten years. Exactly. <laughs> but, I feel, but I feel like there isn't much more to say. Like, my whole family knew I was playing The Sims. I, like, I made... My family, my grandparents, I made, like, scenarios. I m- tried what to make... did, What did you like about bil- building houses and things like that? In Sims 4, it's delightful. But in Sims 2, it's the gameplay between the Sims that's interesting. Something they forgot about. So you about like the, the gameplay Sims. more than building? Yeah, so the building wasn't really my stuff. I just really wanted to make, like, a scenario in my head. Okay. Okay, next up. So... Disney Channel. <laughs> Yeah, but more specifically, 
the Disney Channel like live action shows. Okay, so not the animated shows. Not really. So you know, like <laughs> that's I- weird because the for me it's like the opposite. I feel like the animation shows are the ones that are good. <laughs> yeah, but uh, like for me, like shows like Hannah Montana and The Wizards of Waverly Place, and like. Uh, Oh my god, which one was the with Demi Lovato in it? I forgot the name. Sunny with a Chance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then there was like High School Musical, which was like, it's like, I still sing the songs on my way to to mm. to, uh, to my work sometimes. Like, I, 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 I can, I honestly didn't know that you were so, such a big fan of Disney Channel shows. Yeah, I mean, I watched like uh, Sweet Life with Zack and Cody. You remember that show? Mm. So the yeah, first, I watched that too. So the first series in the ho- the in the hotel, I watched it a lot, and then I think I seen all, almost all no no not almost all, but I also watched a lot of it when they were on seas. Mm. Uh, I mean, High School Musical was like I love musicals, so duh. Okay. And I wanted to actually bring up a memory with this because I was a really huge Hannah Montana fan. Yeah. I I I I I've seen like um like I've seen a lot of episodes. I even had like most of her songs on my iPad that I got from my dad and I went to school and I was listening to Hannah Montana until by one day my brother deleted all of the freaking songs off of it it. (laughs) because he couldn't handle that I listened to Hannah Montana (laughs) yeah was that it yeah I mean (laughs) okay yeah because it's like sad sad story it is a sad story because like I mean it's 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 no surprise like I, I I for at that time it's it's pretty bad when you consider like a, a young boy listening to Hannah Montana song that 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 for in my in my brother's eyes that was like really bad so he decided Wait, how, to... how old were you 11 12 okay but no but he probably wished I was like listening to rap or like rock or but I listened to Hannah Montana <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can you sing a Hanum? No, no, we can't sing on this podcast. Uh, no, don't only, do that. It would be really But do you remember all the show, uh, all the songs? I mean, if we would sing on the show, it would truly be the best of both worlds. Boo! <laughs> I I don't think I do. I think like after he deleted the songs of my iPad, I kind of was like. I kind of lost interest. Mm. I, I will admit, I watched some of the Disney Channel shows when I was younger and I liked them then. Uh, sometimes after I tried to watch them when I was a bit older, I couldn't really do that. But I, uh, my favorite show on this Disney Channel was Wizard of Waverly Place. It was really good. And then, like, mm. uh, and Selena Gomez really, like... Thanks to that role, everyone knew who she was. Yeah, that, that's. I always felt felt like that was a little bit weird of how you watch this young uh, star, Disney Channel star child, and then she she becomes this big artist around the world with her her music. But that was kind of the Disney formula. Like they picked mm. up promising. Uh, like entertainers slash singers and then launched their careers like Demi Lovato, Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez uh, like these are all like Jonas Brothers too yeah well so should we continue on? yeah let me not babble more on about uh, my, <laughs> my on your love my dis- for my... Disney Channel exactly so next up is RuPaul's Drag Race. Really? Yeah. Like in the, in the top six. Yeah. Like, duh. Like, it. this, this is the show that made me kind of comfortable with being who I am. Because it's like, it's, 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 it's ten, it's ten gay men trying to outdo each other being flamboyant and dancing and singing and putting on a show. Like, mm. if they can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. Okay, for, for for our listeners, if there's one thing that Carol has tried to get me into for the longest time, it's probably RuPaul's Drag Race. It's so it was it it was really good, and then 
Like I, 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 I kind of fell off after season eleven. Um, they're now there's eleven season. seasons. There's more. There's like all stars, and then there's queens of the universe. Right now, what do they do in e- in this show? Uh, what do they even do, girl? Yeah, I, I, sis, let me explain. <laughs> so each week they have a mini. Do I want to be your sis? No, it's it's slang. It's like. <laughs> uh, oh, I know. <laughs> so each week they have a maxi challenge and a runway challenge. So during the maxi challenge, it can be either a comedy routine, or they have like a talent show, or they like sing, or there's like a snatch game where they impersonate people. And afterwards they're judged, and they can save or break their reputation by the runway challenge, where they can have to like strut and uh, like model these garments that they either made or have made before the show. And some of the creations and some of the moments are legendary from that show. Uh, okay. Like one uh, one of the big, biggest breakout stars from RuPaul's Drag, Drag Race that I follow it, are Trixie Mattel and Katya Zamodochkova, because uh, those names not, m- means nothing to me. Oh God, they're really big for me. Like I booked Trixie Mattel's uh, concert last year before the pandemic happened, and the only reason why oh. I didn't go was because of the pandemic. Like. And now she is not touring around the world. She's only touring US. So that freaking sucked. Are there some nice contestants on this show? Or are all, or are all them kind of bitchy? I mean, that depends. Because like a lot of drag performers have... I mean, they can either be as themselves or they perform a persona. So a lot of them are either mean or catty or considerate or cute. Like, for example, Valentina. When she... Entered the competition, it was, I don't remember which scene it was, but there's this famous meme of like, Valentina, you could go out in a fucking, in a freaking diaper, and the judge would still eat you up. And and she was always like, she was really mean to the girls. And then mm. on the after show, she sicked like her fans on another contestant. And like, there was like an intervention at the finale when they talked about it. And she was like, I'm sorry that you feel this way. <laughs> Mm. With, with your personality, I can really understand why you would watch a show like that. that. Like, for example... It's perfect for you. Y- yeah, it is. Like, because I also kind of have a penchant for reality television. Like, before Drag Race, I really liked Castaway and, like, Amazing Race. Okay, well, to the next <laughs> thing in that case. Okay, so the next thing is... It's actually a podcast. Uh, hello from the Magic Tavern. Okay. Uh, have you? T- I think you have spoken about this one for me. Yeah. So, hello from the Magic Tavern is a improv. Uh, well, not really improv. It's it's uh, it's it's a story about a man that six ish years ago fell through a magical portal behind the Burger King into a magical fantastical land of Foon, uh, and now he is chronicling his adventure with his two pals. We used to the blue and also chant the talking badger. So this is a food related podcast in some way. Food? No, the, uh, didn't the, you the say land food? is called Foon. I thought you said food. No 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 no. He fell behind he fell into a magic portal behind a Burger King into a mystical fantastical land of Foon. I, I kind of thought because you were talking about Burger King and then I heard the word food. Oh, is this kind of some kind of food related show? No, no, no. So Arnie, who is our main character, or well, like fish out of water that we follow, he is receiving a Wi-Fi signal from the Burger King. So he... Yeah, well, more, more, uh, more about why you love it than describe the plot for me, thank you. I think like they're really, they're really silly and... And funny, and and sometimes they're really <laughs> dumb and corny, and it's it's a, it's a really they they all, they have like an outline for an episode, but then they improvise the rest. And each week they have a guest, and uh, they try to structure like a coherent narrative each season. Do they know what is going to happen in every episode, or no? You don't uh, know. So one time they may be. Uh, attending... No, we no don't know, but do they know what they're going to talk about in every episode? I mean, they probably, like, know that a guest will come and what they mm. want to do with the season, 
but since everything is almost improvised, like they like any episode can change just like the course of the season. <laughs> so so one one episode could retcoin a uh, red a lot of things about the previous exactly so like hmm. one, uh, and and sometimes the characters come back but if you want a light-hearted show with we can make can maybe a full episode on some of these things later on but but then you ha- you would have to listen to the to the podcast a little bit i could pick up some episodes for you uh, that's not uh, maybe you could more describe it for me in detail then <laughs> Fine, but the first one, the first thing that I... Carol, when, when I when I talked about my media franchises, I wasn't like, you need to watch this. Yeah, that's where you lost your chance, bud. <laughs> okay, next thing. <laughs> okay, so next up uh, is actually uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I had I had a feeling about this one to be honest. Yeah, duh. I mean, I when our group still met, uh, which doesn't really happen that often because our DM has his whole house being renovated, so he can't host, <laughs> and he's living with his mom at the moment. But mm. when we played, we played pretty well. Like uh, we have a we have like a uh, one group going. Um, I am playing as a undead mage. Uh, there is like a home, like a homebrew race that uh, my friend Matthias came up with. Uh, we're playing in like a pretty grim, dark setting. Uh, there are seven of us, um, which is pretty chaotic sometimes. Um, and we try to search for like the the thingamabobs, the crystals that can uproot the, the thingamabob. Hmm? Yeah, the thingamabobs. Oh, the the. Uh, MacGuffins. I, I know what that is. Yeah, so we're looking for the yeah. MacGuffin crystals. And uh, supposedly each of them has like a special power. And uh, we're also like uh, trying to help like an organization. Trying to find these crystals before they cause like uh, apocalypse upon the world. And it's really fun. Like I really like role playing. So this really suits me. Hmm. And like I also hosted some adventures. For example, I hosted a Shrek inspired one shot where I retold the first Shrek movie in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> but did, did you try to hide it uh, that it, no, it was, was the Shrek I, story or I was pretty well, straightforward. Okay. It was really fun. <clears throat> like it like it was surprisingly we we managed to to save the princess. We even have it like we even had like a talking course. <laughs> okay. We're going probably going to need to move on to the next one now, Carol. I actually wanted to suggest, suggest a thing. What? Would it be all right if I hosted a session for you on our podcast? What? Just us two? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We're going to have to think about it. Exactly. Let's just let, let's just put it out there. Okay. So next up, be, after Dungeons and Dragons, number two on my list is of course. The only, the one, the critically acclaimed MMO, Final Fantasy XIV, which has a free trial up to level 40, <laughs> and they access to the critically acclaimed expansion pack Heaven's Word. <laughs> is this just the Final Fantasy XIV, or is it? do you consider other Final Fantasy games in this, this point? I think Final Fantasy games have a lot of in them. Like, they have a lot of good things, like... World of Final but Fantasy. you're counting the whole Final Fantasy franchise, then? No, this time I'm specifically talking about the MMO. Okay. Because, like, yeah, I liked Fan- I like Seven, and I liked like the world of Final Fantasy, the the monster collecting game. Um, mm. But I think this is the game I'm playing, like putting the most hours in right now. Final Fantasy fourteen. If I have the time, I want to play because the story is interesting, and it's just. I wish more people played with, with me. <laughs> I knew that you really liked it, but I did not think that it would become come in second place. Yeah, it's that good. <laughs> I didn't know that you liked it that much, to be honest. So, if you have time and you wanna, if you wanna lose it doing something great, please play Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> Are you speaking to me, me or the viewers here? The listeners and you, but oh. I mean, I'm not gonna force anyone to play any MMO. 
Okay. Uh, and Final Fantasy Online. Exactly. It's... I I I can admit one thing is that I really I kind of really like the world and the visuals of Final Fantasy and the old franchise. Yeah, they have this distinct feel that it is Final Fantasy, not anything mm. else. It's it feels pretty original, and even in Final yeah. Fantasy fourteen, it takes a lot of inspiration from previous titles, even though it like if you're gonna go like it takes inspiration inspiration from previous titles. But also feels like Final Fantasy because, like, even if you go out out of the town and meet like a horse, or, like a sheep, they look distinctly like different from what you see in other games. Yeah. Well, okay. We have nine choices done. Now it's time for the top one. Okay. What has Carol in the number one spot? Okay. So number one, drum roll, please. This one didn't have transition. What the hell? Welcome to Night Vale. It's another podcast that is one of my favorite things of all time. So your favorite media franchise is a podcast. Yes. Okay. So the podcast has been going on, I think, for 10 years now. 10 years? And I started listening to it a few years ago. So since that okay. time, this year... I How have... many episodes are out? Let me see, let me see. So each episode... You don't know? No, I actually don't know. Uh, but I did caught, but I am caught up with the series. Okay. Let me just boot up my Spotify and look it up for you. Um, maybe can talk a little bit, bit about what the show is about then. Okay, so the series has one hundred and ninety-seven episodes. Yeah. Each episode is between thirty to forty minutes long. And uh, kind of like our episodes. Oh, oh, kind of like our episodes then. Exactly, but... No, actually, we go over time all the time. Yeah, we try to... So, Welcome to Night Vale is a audio podcast detailing a story of a fictional town, of a fictional American town of Night Vale. And, you know, Lovecraft and, like, weird fiction. Yeah? Yeah, so this town is full of it. We have secret government agency that patrols and controls people. We have a student council that are all, like... There's a like a, just a mass of people, but they're like one mind. We have station management that uh, monitors the, uh, the the radio station where Cecil Palmer works, and they're just like an otherworldly being. We have floating cats with spikes. We have people who age, like people who don't age. Uh, we have mysterious figures. We have dog it, parts. Is there a main character? There isn't. So the story is presented in in a form. Well, it's a it's a it's a radio broadcast. So okay. each two weeks we have a new radio broadcast from Night Vale, and it's presented by Cecil, the radio host, and he presents just like events, like traffic, the weather, like what events have happened, like uh, if there's like for example there was one episode about a new person that moved to town, and mm. uh, this person was had a secret identity so of course they couldn't talk about the real person they just made up stuff on the radio about the person that moved in and said welcome our new neighbor that you knew always <laughs> <laughs> or there, were, there was an episode about uh frank chen was murdered by a by a five-headed dragon Hiram mcdaniel who ran for the mayor of night vale but he was murdered a long time ago so the family of his went to court with the secret police department of Night Vale. And uh, the, 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 the court uh, stated that the police have to bring back uh, Frank Chen as he was alive five years ago. And, like, what does this mean? How? Will they resurrect him? Will they go back in time? What, what is going to happen? And if the police are not going to find a Frank Chen, which they did, which they failed, which they did, which they failed again, uh, the ownership of the town will go to the family of Frank Chen. And it was just so interesting. Uh, and there's like a... And Nightville also have live shows. They released the books. I have many of them. I have... Can, can I hear why you like the show so much? Uh, for me, it's just... Nightville has this interesting long form. Like, it's... It's, a, it's like a show you watch for a long time, so you're familiar with the characters, and you're interested mm. in how they will develop. Nightwell has this plus that it's really long form. Like, it's really long, so you really get attached to characters and how they develop. 
Not only that, mm. it's like really, it's, 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 it's a little bit horrific because in one episode, a uh, a big black monolith can erupt from the ta- from the, from the middle of the town and threaten the lives of human beings, or there can be a stray packs of dogs attacking and th- th- killing people. Um, there can be. Let me look up. Uh, there are like um, women, faceless old women living in people's homes, but it's really cozy as well because you follow. Yeah, but think about it. They also released books. They released many books. I have three of them. I have the faceless old woman that lives under your home. Uh, I have uh, it devours, and I have Welcome to Night Vale, which I read all, and they are and they are wonderful. And mm-hmm. they also do live shows, and they also have other shows like. Uh, Within the Wires or uh, the the Flying Circus one, um, I know that they're now releasing a new book called uh, Just Beneath the Ribs, which I'm really stoked for, uh, and I want to pre-order. Um, and it's like it's it's cool. Like Cecil is like he can really tell a story. We learn about his husband Carlos. We learn about like the the Strex Corp or the other town that there's just like body horror and like hanging teeth from trees and decorating the town with blood of the, of the of, of the town like it's, okay. it's it's cozy horror yeah and with that you have done your 10 choices carol yeah i did i are, are, are you do you like the list that you have here or obviously you do but how do you feel about looking at it i think it's pretty all right i think my tastes are varied enough because I was worried that I would include a little bit, like, one, one, like, I have movies, TV shows, TV dramas, podcasts, video games that I enjoy. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of like our uh, title in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It's whatever we want. V- video games, movies, uh, TV series. Hmm. And whatever we feel talk- like talking about. Yeah. But what did what did you think about my list? Did you enjoy it? Did you think? Did, did you guess enough? Did you guess guess enough uh, of my entries? There were some things that I I I know that you have talked about some podcast with me, but I have kind of forgotten what those were. So uh, uh, I wasn't really sure what those podcasts were that you have in here. To be honest, but you have given an explanation of them. Um, the other stuff I kind of feel like, uh, uh, while I didn't really predict them that you would talk about them, I, when when you say it, it, I was kind of like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, you kind of know me well, so. <laughs> um, the, one t- the one thing that I am surprised about, actually, if, is... Not that Final Fantasy Online is on the list because you talk about it quite a lot, but that it's number two. I felt that I was, was a little bit surprised about. I felt it was only fair because it has like if I let it, I know it will consume my life. I am, I am, I am, I am holding against doing that right now. <laughs> okay, but uh, we're going to have to end the episode. Is there something else you want to say, Carol? Actually, one little tidbit of information. So you remember that gaming channel we, we had uh, once once a time? Yep. And we had an outro because we were the the gamer knights and we said good night, listeners, good night. Yeah. So it was not only a pun. It was kind of a reference to Night Vale as well. Was it? Yeah, because Cecil Palmer always finishes his broadcast with uh, Good night, Night Vale, good night. <laughs> do, you, do you remember that episode we we did when we 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 said good night and you and I hadn't realized yet that it was a pun on, on our name Nights. I was amazed because I was really sure that you did. <laughs> And you thought I I was doing a reference to our title. Well, I mean, now you know. When I just when I just didn't know how to end the episodes. But we at least had a good intro. But like mm. I learned, I feel like in the future I'm not gonna do that because it feels like I'm taking maybe a little bit too much inspiration from the shows that I like. And uh, well, we should try 
doing our own thing instead. Mm. But anyway, that was Carol's top 10 media franchises. As always, thank you for listening and we hope you enjoyed it as much as we have. Don't forget to follow, hit that bell icon or follow us on socials like Twitter. See you again next episode and have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Goodbye. day. Goodbye. Or good night. No, no, no. <laughs>